Oh boy, your sweet Papa Yam is back here to rustle some feathers. <laughs> China? Communism? Global manufacturing? When will it end? CF Moto is here to corrupt the minds of our soft brained baby squids and turn them into red state sleeper cells who will take our jobs, steal our AI cat girl girlfriends, and put the big four out of business. And then what will we do? Someone has to do something before it's too late. If you're with me, comment an ice cream cone emoji in the comments section of this video. It will be the secret handshake of the anti CF Moto gang so we know who we can trust. Okay, enough of that. I have to stop this bit before I get put on some social credit watch list. See CF Moto makes some pretty good bikes, and I'm sure they're not going anywhere. I recently rode the CF Moto 450 SS. I was begrudgingly very surprised. It was very good. It's a brand that was predominantly manufacturing smaller displacement beginner bikes and intermediate motorcycles, has started making some big boy bikes, and is even rumored to have a V4 superbike in the works. That is kind of nuts, and there is a lot to dig in there. So for those of you who hate CF Moto so much, why don't you just drop your iPhone and every other product you own that was made in China down a cannon and shoot it into the ocean. For everyone else, Let's take a minute and see what in the heck is going on with CF Moto these days and if they're truly aiming to take over every segment of the motorcycle market. Today's video is sponsored by our tried and true American made friends over at ASV Inventions. I'll tell you more about their unbreakable levers a little bit later in the video. Now let's get into it. CF Moto has been in the motorsports game since 1989. Since then, they have actually been pretty highly regarded for the quality of their incredibly affordable machines. Their ATVs and side by sides have been available in the US since 2006, and from what little research I've done, because let's be honest, the last place a motorcyclist wants to spend their time is on any ATV forums, their off-road vehicles have a pretty good track record amongst their owners. CF Moto made a big splash when they released their lineup of street-going motorcycles in the US for the 2022 model year, but their brand has had prevalence behind the curtain of global motorcycle manufacturing for more than 10 years prior to the launch of their new line of motorcycles. CF Moto signed a partnership agreement with KTM in 2011 11, which was 12 years ago. Wow. Time just, wow, I'm getting old. And the two brands have been in cahoots ever since. What began as a licensing agreement for CF Moto to sell KTM motorcycles in China under the name KTM R2R, great branding, evolved into sharing production responsibilities for certain models and mechanical components. This partnership with KTM has given CF Moto a bit of a head start in the motorcycle market compared to a different Chinese company coming in without any existing connections. Although KTM isn't really much of a hometown hero for anyone, it's an Austrian based company whose partial owned by the Indian company Bajaj and in partnership with the Chinese company CF Moto, KTM is really an example of the reality of global manufacturing. Despite this, people don't seem to get too up in arms about where their KTMs are made, they seem to be more concerned as to why there is a puddle of coolant on the floor in their garage. One of the most notable products of the CF Moto and KTM partnership is the Duke 790, which uses a 799cc parallel twin engine manufactured by CF Moto in China. This exact same engine is found in the CF Moto Ibex 800 adventure bike, which currently stands as the largest motorcycle in CF Moto's North American lineup. And for the last few years, CF Moto has prioritized investing in small displacement motorcycles aimed for beginner and intermediate riders. This seems to be where many manufacturers are focusing their efforts these days as brands like Royal Enfield are offering incredibly value-driven motorcycles that don't cost an arm and a leg. Because let's be honest, young people have no money and everything is only getting more expensive. So if motorcycle manufacturers want any chance in retaining a younger customer base each season, there needs to be more bikes that young people can afford while still continuing to eat. CF Moto's popular introductory models are the 300NK and SS, naked and fared variants of the same 300cc beginner sport bike. They also debuted the 450SS, with its larger displacement and competitive tech package stands to rival many other beginner sport bikes in the market, like the Ninja 400 or the Yamaha R3, which if you guys saw my review of that bike, is actually pretty good. CF Moto also produces some middleweight motorcycles like the 650NK and 650 Adventure, as well as the 700 CLX. These are more intermediate or beginner plus motorcycles start to be less competitive when you think about how they've already surpassed certain mental price breaks. Why buy a CF Moto 700 for 7,200 bucks when you could get an MT-07 for just a thousand bucks more? When buying a Japanese bike means greater dealer support, parts availability, aftermarket options, and resale value. Not to mention the stigma you'd avoid by riding a Japanese made motorcycle instead of a Chinese made one. Because let's be honest, many motorcyclists are vain and insecure myself included sometimes. Why else would we put our physical well-being on the line every day just to be recognized by our peers as very, very cool? Now look, there is no doubt that the thought of a motorcycle produced by China manufacturing raises questions of reliability or build quality. Read 
do owner's manual carefully before riding. Every motorcyclist has skimped on certain parts for their bike before and come to regret it. Buy cheap, buy twice, as they say. That's why we're super excited to have recently partnered with ASV. ASV makes some of the best levers available for both street bikes and as well as dirt bikes. They actually have one of the biggest selection of levers of manufacturers with a catalog that spans all the way back to 1985. All levers from ASV are made right here in America in Huntington Beach, California. Since they have zero concerns about reliability, they have an amazing warranty program for their unbreakable levers. Levers shouldn't be a routinely replaced wear item, no matter how hard you ride on the track or off-road. So no matter what type of bike you ride, follow the link in the description below to find a new set of levers from ASV. It'll be the last pair you ever need. Use the link below and use the code YAMI to receive 15% off your order. Thanks so much to ASV for the support on the channel. We're super excited to be working together. Again, use that link in the description and use the code YAMI for 15% off. Now let's get back to the video. Despite the stigma or negative aspects of a more expensive Chinese bike, CF Moto has no intentions of slowing down and ultimately plans to captivate the advanced rider market as well by providing high quality advanced feature packed motorcycles for a price cheap enough to offset the disadvantages. We've already mentioned the Ibex 800 Adventure Bike, which is currently the largest motorcycle in their lineup that makes use of the KTM Duke 790 engine, which is manufactured by CF Moto themselves. But the rumor mill is churning and it seems like CF Moto has some big plans in the works to further expand upon KTM's expertise in building larger displacement advanced motorcycle. Specifically, it seems that CF Moto has plans for a 1000cc V4 Superbike. What's equally strange but less impressive is CF Moto's involvement in motorcycle racing. In 2022, CF Moto debuted in the Moto3 class of GP racing, utilizing a rebranded KTM RC250 GP race bike. KTM is not known for their production sport bikes, currently only selling the RC390, the lovable beginner sport bike, and RC8C track only race bike using a retuned version of KTM's 889cc engine, which by the way, I am a big, big, big fan of that bike. It's one of the bikes I would love to own and ride. But they have a degree of influence over CF Moto's rumored superbike, as it seems like a massive engineering undertaking for a company who typically uses small displacement twins. It is speculated that this bike may be distilled down from technology used in KTM's RC16 MotoGP race bike. CF Moto filled a patent for a 1000cc V4 motorcycle in 2022, and the patent filing stated a claimed power output of a spicy 204 horsepower. Does the world need a CF Moto V4 superbike? Can the world handle a CF Moto V4? For Superbike? Will CF Moto enter World Superbike and use this motorcycle to compete? That would really be something. Let's homologate a CF Moto race bike and go racing a World Superbike, boys. That would be awesome. I'm struggling to comprehend the possibilities. They are also speculated to be releasing a naked bike using a 1278cc engine that's based on KTM's LC8. Though currently not sold in the US, CF Moto already made the 1250TRG Touring model that was sold in China using the same engine. CF Moto has already submitted a patent for a naked motorcycle using the 1278cc twin aimed at the hyper naked market. And because it's 2023 and everything is so damn weird now, CF Moto is not the only company working on a Chinese superbike. As of 2020, MV Agusta is in partnership with QJ Motors to distribute their motorcycles within China. But as we know, the relationship rarely stops there. When there is money to be made, all brand gatekeeping just flies out of the window. QJ Motors is apparently working on a 1000cc superbike based on the MV Agusta Brutale 1000RR. Apparently on Chinese social media sites, images were posted by QJ Motors showing a 1000cc sport bike that is quite similar in most aspects to the Brutale, but sporting QJ badging and some Chinese farkles. Ironically, or maybe not ironic at this point in the video, the Piero Mobility Group, the company that owns KTM, also owns 25% of MV Agusta. So who the hell really knows what is going on? But I think it just goes to show a whole lot goes on behind the scenes of these massive companies that the layperson just doesn't recognize. Will 2025 bring the Chinese superbike to the US? I guess time will tell, but I'll tell you what, if I'm still doing Yami Noob videos by then, I will buy and own and ride and give away a Chinese superbike because the memes just make themselves. I guess time will tell. For the most part, it seems like motorcycle manufacturers partnering with other internal companies to expand their global footprint as well as reduce production costs haven't really had any dramatic effects on build quality like you would imagine. But were KTM and MV Agusta really the poster children for bulletproof reliability to begin with? We don't just want these backdoor deals to lead to another AMF era Harley Davidson situation where build quality tanks and money is instead invested into branding recreational sporting equipment instead of building motorcycles. 
Bengals. Speaking of, there's a Chinese Harley Davidson now too. Surprise, surprise, QJ Moto now builds a Harley Davidson. May every bald eagle in America shed a single tear for the death of patriotism in this country, brother. QJ Davidson debuted two different motorcycles this spring, the X350 and X500. These bikes were built in China by QJ Motors and were originally said to be sold exclusively in China. But as we've seen with bikes like the KTM Duke 200 or the Honda CRF 150L, many of these small displacement inexpensive bikes tend to make their way to the States sooner or later once the company boardroom remembers young people in America are broke and can't afford to spend more than five grand on a motorcycle. And since very few young people can even afford a brand new Harley Davidson if they are by chance diluted enough from decades of inbreeding to find themselves attracted to the brand as they are to their own sister, the chances of them being able to afford one are quite low. I think there is no reason Harley wouldn't bring the X500 to the States to compete with other value-driven small roadsters available today, especially with that Triumph Speed 400 on the horizon. The X500 is powered by a 500cc parallel twin that makes a claimed 47 horsepower and 34 foot-pounds of torque. This bike would be A2 compliant and should be Harley-Davidson sell it in Europe. This bike has a fairly neutral riding position with mid-mounted foot controls and a wide handlebar. It's not a terrible looking motorcycle by any means, but it is a bit nondescript in the way that many Chinese motorcycles are. It's got a classic lightweight roadster style with a bit of homage to Harley's flat track racing days. The X500 has lots of similarities to the Benelli Leon Chino 500, a motorcycle also built under the umbrella of QJ Motors. I've had some first-hand experience with a few Benellis over the years and they're not terrible by any means. I actually really like that Benelli Leon Chino 500. So maybe the new entry-level roadsters could get more young people into the barn shield. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now that about wraps it up for today. This was just a fun little investigation in some of the behind the scenes wheeling and dealing that moves the global motorcycle industry. Would you trust life and limb to a CF Moto Superbike on track? Are the cost savings alone incentive to buy some of these motorcycles made in China? Is your war vet grandpa rolling in his grave as we speak? Do we need a CF Moto V4 as an expert bike giveaway? Let me know and I will catch you on the next one. Fact. President John F. Kennedy suffered from many health issues throughout his life, some of which were kept hidden from the public during his time in office. To manage his pain, Kennedy relied on various medications, including powerful painkillers and amphetamines, which were administered by his personal physician, Dr. Max Jacobson, known as Dr. Feelgood. Goodbye.